tell me what your coach did on this hill. What what your how it worked. So when I started to return back to snow and before I took my first jumps, uh, my coach built a little hill to get my knees prepared for my skis that I would have to deal with in a in a couple of days and just a little balance things, practicing my in run, so um, it definitely we had a progression to get back onto the ski jump. When you saw this little hill, what did you think? Did you think it was just gonna work or were you like, that's silly? I mean, you know, if I look at it now, it's kind of like pathetic, but I hadn't been on skis in um, four months, so it was kind of like the most exciting day in four months. <laughs> I, I destroyed my knee in 2004, uh -huh. playing around on alpine skis. And uh, I was in the same position Sarah was in that uh, I wanted to make the Olympic team uh, for Torino in 2006. Yeah. Uh, so with lots of help from uh, medical staff at USSA uh, after knee surgery, I spent six months rehabbing and uh, I had a longer timeline than Sarah did. Uh, but I was stronger than I ever was, feeling more fit than I ever was, really excited. I came out and jumped and something wasn't right in my knee. And what had happened was I overlooked and also the medical staff overlooked because of the actual jumping equipment and the, the angles that it forces you to be in, my knee wasn't accustomed, it wasn't used to those feelings, uh, but I could do everything terrific with a shoe on or, or barefoot. But as soon as I put my jumping boots on, mm -hmm. it forced my knees forward a little bit and put me in a, in a awkward position to where my knee wasn't ready to handle the force. Mm -hmm. So with this situation, um, I took my experience and also in working with the medical staff for Sarah, mm -hmm. strongly advised and recommended that we take baby steps getting her back on snow and, mm -hmm. and having her, even in the gym and in the PT room, put her jump boots on mm -hmm. and do some exercises and make sure that uh, in those angles, her knee is feeling good and progressing the way that we all hope it will. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we did uh, when she was back on skis is I built a little tiny track yeah. which mimics the actual jump uh, so she could feel that, put her jump boots on, put her skis on. Then I also built some, some little bumps, if you will, <laughs> to uh, have her uh, react to them and, and really see how her balance and her coordination is. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started there and progressed slowly, mm -hmm. uh, ultimately uh, up onto the jump. So. so what was her reaction when she saw that little tiny baby jump? Her reaction was, uh, do I really have to do this? Uh, <laughs> she. She's the kind of person, and most ski jumpers are, just, you just want to go up on the jump. You don't want to have to start from zero again. Yeah. Uh, but she was very patient with it. I expected to have a little bit more pushback, but mm -hmm. she did it, and she actually really enjoyed it because it brings you back to what got you involved in the sport. You get to play on skis, you get to be outside, and uh, it's very inspiring to watch. And also for the club that I manage, all of my kids use it too as a warm-up. So it's... It's a good tool to have, mm -hmm. and uh, no matter what level of sport you're at, you always have to stay focused on the basics mm -hmm. uh, because you can get caught up in the, the top 1% of each little technical aspect, but it always comes back to a solid foundation and basics, and that's right where we started with Sarah.